Hi, I'm Mandy and this is my channel Make It Sew. Today it's Sunday and I was hoping to do a Friday Sews but it was my son's birthday and then the weather, I know we go on about it all the time but it was too hot and I tried to vlog and I just couldn't do it. <laughs> so I thought I'd try again today because it's a bit cooler this morning and I really want to talk to you about what I've been up to since I did my last Friday Sews. So first of all, I've been busy attending social events and also I have made a few garments. So when I left you last time, I was going to be joining in on the Sew 7 Together reveal on the 7th of July and I talked about how when I did an update on my Sorvi dress um, about the waistband. Now I want to talk to you about that because obviously in the reveal you would have seen that I didn't have it. <laughs> and that's because I can see why Peggy didn't include a waistband on the shorter version of the Sorvi and on me it was even shorter. So I've actually got a video to show you because I don't hold anything back. I like to be honest with people. So I'm gonna show you the video in a minute and it shows you how the dress looked on me in the short version with a waistband. And hopefully you'll understand why I then removed it because I wasn't happy with how it looked. So I'm just gonna put that clip here while I'm talking to you. And then after that, I will show you a picture of how it looked after I took the waistband out. So I really liked the longer length Sorvi dress by Sew House 7 with an elastic band. Elastic band, you know what I mean, an elastic waistband. Um, because it just sat really nicely and cinched in where I wanted it to. But on the shorter version, it did split me in half and it just didn't compliment me at all. So I do prefer it in the flowy version for the shorter length. And that was such a lovely day really enjoyed the company of Judy and Sam and hopefully everyone that joined in with us enjoyed it too so watch this space for our next adventure. Also on the same day I was travelling down to Buckinghamshire to High Wycombe to go and join in with the Southern Social run by Sequin Girly Create Sam and also I was going to be meeting Laura there because at the moment as well as chatting online we wanted to meet in person to discuss our collaboration that we're currently doing for the Sorrento jacket by Sew Over It. So neither of us have finished it quite yet but just to update you I'm on step 96 of 101 so I'm nearly there. <laughs> So that won't be long now before that does get revealed. So watch this space for that one. So at the Southern Social, I got to meet a lot of lovely people again. And I took a pattern that I've done already before, which is the Friday Pattern Company Patina blouse. Nearly didn't get that out in one sentence properly. Um, so I started it at the Southern Social and I'll show you that in a minute. But let's just say I didn't get much done that day because I was talking too much and I was easily distracted. So after that Sunday, my husband, bless him, drove me down there and drove me back that night. Um, so that was quite a lot in one day, but I really enjoyed the company and I enjoy seeing everybody. So it was worth it for that. So after that, I did a virtual sewing room where I carried on sewing my patina blouse and then on the 12th of July, which was last Friday, I attended for the first time since I started my new role, the Walpole Social um, Sewing Group I go to near Kings Lynn, and it was their celebrations, it was a birthday party because a lot of the members were reaching special milestones of birthdays, so it was a good excuse to have a celebration. So although we didn't do any sewing that day, we all took food in and it was really lovely just to sit around chatting, eating, and we also had gifts that we gave out to each other, like a secret Santa. Um, so that was really nice, and I will show you those in a minute when I show you all my purchases. So I hope you've got time in your day to watch all of this video, because I think it's going to be a bit long today. <laughs> 
Um, after that, I attended another social in person, and that was the Scudden Social, which is in Lincoln. So I have a brother in Lincoln, which is brilliant because I get to see him and we have some quality time together and I also get to attend another social that I wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So this one at Scudden, I'm going to put a little picture of when the next dates are so that if you're local to that area or if you fancy traveling there, there's some dates that Emma is running some other um, days and I'm hoping to go to the one in September because August is going to be a very busy month for me so I can't do that as well unfortunately but Emma is so lovely and welcoming we always get cake <laughs> and it's just lovely again to meet lots of lovely people um, that go regularly and uh, they always make you feel welcome if you've never been to a social it really is worth doing it because you're you're not made to feel awkward they're so friendly. If you have any problems or, you know, you just want opinions on something, they're really helpful. The same as Walpole. I mean, it's like going home to family with them. They're such a lovely group that, you know, you don't feel silly asking anything because you're not made to feel silly. And that's what I love about the sewing community. So, yeah, very busy. Um, and I did attend another virtual sewing room session as well, although I must admit I was really tired on that day because I've been trying to work longer hours at work so that I can have a day off in the week. And it was my first try at that last week and I had Tuesday off and I had so many plans. I ended up walking the dog, which is what I used to do quite regularly, getting some new glasses, attending a quick work meeting. And that afternoon I just sonked on the sofa. I was that tired. <laughs> that was after my Lincoln weekend and working 10 hours Monday, so it's not surprising. And then I was in bed by nine o'clock that night, so I didn't get any sewing done. So I'm hoping this week, because I haven't had a manic weekend, I might actually gain by having a day off during the week. We'll see. If not, I'm going to go back to my normal hours. So, as well as my Sorvi dress, what else have I been up to? Well, I said last time on my video that I was making the fringe dress and that all I had to do was hem it. And I was hoping to have done that by the time I released the video, but it was such a miserable day. I tried to have photos done inside the house and you just couldn't see it, it was so dark. So I have hemmed it and finished it and I have got some photos. So I did, in the end, Follow the instructions on the um, hem where you sew a line of stitching uh, one centimetre in and then you fold it over and you sew it again. So it's a double hem and I've done really well, I think, to do this curved hem because it's the first time I've had one that's quite so curved and I'll, I'm going to be honest, I've got one little tuck on there but you cannot see it. And I think considering how flimsy this fabric is, which I absolutely love the fabric, but it was very flimsy to sew with, um, I think I did all right. So there's some pictures here and a little video to show you how it looks on me. Um, I am happy with it. I'm still not totally convinced that I needed to add a whole two inches onto the bodice because when I sit down, my, that part, the waist, sits more over my stomach. So I'm not sure if I overdid it on the length and maybe I might do a twirl of just the top part of the bodice so that I can see how it would look if I just added one inch. I am happy with the length I added though onto the skirt part, which was three inches because I just like how it sits on me. So. That finally is my fringe dress that I've finished and it won't be my last one. I don't think I'm gonna be quite as adventurous and do, I can't remember Sam how many she's up to now, but I do like it and in that fabric, it's nice and floaty and when I um, had some of those photos taken, it was when it was really hot and I wasn't overheating in it. So I definitely like that type of fabric, which was some viscose that I got in a subscription box from Beyond the Pink Door.
So after that, the patina blouse. Now, as I said, I attended the Southern Social and Laura from So Very Laura came along as well. And she didn't get there till about an hour after I did. But in the meantime, I was just chatting to everybody else anyway. But I'd made the patina before, as I showed you in my last video in a cotton lawn. And I loved how it all came together and I loved how it all fitted. So I then said I was going to make one in a quilting cotton, which I purchased from Barry's in Birmingham on the way back from the Lake District last August. Now, I always had visions of it being some kind of top or blouse. Um, and so because it was narrower, because it's classed as quilting cotton, I think it was 112 centimetres wide, I did buy three metres. So when I put the patina pattern on there, I had quite a lot left actually. So I've got to think what I need to be making with the scraps now, because I don't want to waste it. It's lovely fabric. So I'm going to just turn you round a bit because I haven't got my cameraman with me today and I'm going to show you my patina blouse. So this is the one I made with this gorgeous fabric. I love the colours of it. Um, and I use buttons from my stash. I'm just going to undo it. Doris has got a thermal on underneath, but to be honest, that's probably quite relevant for this weather we've been having. So I'll bring you back to me because I'm just going to show you. So I started sewing it. I'm repeating myself, but I started sewing it at the Southern In-Person Social. And because I was talking a lot, I just, I don't know whether it was, I was just overtired or I was too chatty, but um, I just kept making silly mistakes. And when it says about running um, some stitches up around the facing, I was questioning it, thinking, why am I doing this? So I just ran stitching right along the edge. And then of course it says, fold it over, because you're creating like a hem and it helps to fold it over. So I had to then unpick that. And I just, I didn't get very far that day with it. But one of the lovely ladies gave me this label. And I just thought that, <laughs> that was just so apt for it because, I had used my seam ripper quite a bit that day. Um, this was more structured than the cotton lawn, but after wearing it a couple of times, because I've loved wearing it already, so I wear it to work because it brings a smile to a lot of people's faces. Um, I am actually quite happy that I did do it in this cotton. And I'll show you in a bit some plans for what I'm going to use for my next one, because yes, I'm going to make another patina. So yeah, the buttons were from my stash. No adjustments to the length or anything. Can't remember what size I did. I think it was a 14 or 16, I can't remember. And I'll put it on the screen. I'll have a look for you after this. Um, I, this was sewn over three sessions because of that incident at the Southern Social. So I started it then. I'd cut it out the Saturday night, so it doesn't take long once you've cut it out to make, I'll be honest, unless you're chatting like I did. <laughs> um, and then I also did it whilst I attended the virtual sewing room the next day, and then the day after that, after work, I finished it off. I did use my sewing machine again to sew on the buttons. I know it can be quite scary for people, but on mine, you just set it up and it does a very slow up and down on both holes. So you know you've got it right and you're keeping it quite fixed in on the machine with the foot anyway. Um, but these are more secure than anything I can do by hand because I've never been shown how to do it. Maybe I should look at hand stitching, but I just think this is so quick and I wanted to get it done to where to work the next day. So I really, really love that one. And I'm so glad that I used this fabric because I knew it was going to be a top. And now I've sewn the patina blouse a couple of times. This was definitely one of my favorite patterns to use. So the last thing I made was what I'm wearing. And that is the Friday Pattern Company Donny blouse. Now I used size XL. Um, I wasn't sure whether that would be too big for me, but um, I wanted to extend the length by two inches. And it does say on the pattern that 
you need to make sure that if you do extend the length that it's still going to fit over your hips. So I know a lot of people have added length and said they would still want to add more but I'll show you some photos of me in it and um, I think actually I quite like the length it is. I won't be tucking it in so I, I'm quite happy where it sits actually. And this fabric was from my lovely friend Sam from So Let's Sparkle with Sam. She knew that I liked the blue version that she had so when they had it in red she bought it for me and I'm so grateful for that Sam. I love that it looks so nice in this Donny shirt as well. The fabric came from um, Carolyn Rose where she works so um, I'm sure there's some still available if you would like to purchase some and it's a viscose again so it's nice and drapey. does need a little bit of ironing if you sit down in the car it does crease but my fringe dress is exactly the same but it does feel lovely to wear. Um, I was told to watch the sew along um, from Friday Pattern Company on YouTube because a couple of the methods they use are something that I've never done before. So they show you how to attach the facing and it's really helpful and also the burrito method that they do. Um, so while I was staying at my brother's on the morning of the scavenge social I actually watched the sew along so that while I was there I was familiar with how it all came together and that really did help me actually so I'd recommend watching it if you've never made something like this before. Um, also I did use my prim hammer which is this one and I know there are other things available. The only thing I would say with this one, it, it was great for my one centimetre hem, which is why I used it for this one. It does get hot, this version, and I know you can get silicone ones like Generates or other makes. Um, so eventually I might build up to that because these are things that I've had for a while, but not necessarily remembered I've got. So when I do use them, I realise why I bought them in the first place and they just, makes sense. I also do use another type of hemmer which is the one that you get with the little plastic notch on that you move up and down for the hems but I just found that a lot easier and I did use that actually for my fringe dress as well just for a guide. So they were my makes. Now as you will know if you've been watching my channel for a while I have been on a fabric ban and except for the adoption of the knit fabric that I showed you last time. Um, I haven't bought any fabric still. So I have bought other things because there's always a way around it isn't there? But um, I wanted to show you what's come into my sewing room since I last saw you and I thought I'd start with the gifts I received from a lovely lady in Walpole Sewing Social when we had the birthday party. I don't know who it is, I have got an idea, but I'm not going to say in case I'm wrong, but I can see the thought behind this lovely gift that they made me. So the first thing I got was a coat hanger. Now a lot of people might think why would you get a coat hanger Mandy, but they know that I vlog and I think what they thought their intention was that I would have something lovely to hang my handmade garments on to show everybody and I just think that it's really thoughtful and it's got lovely pink pom-poms on and it's just a lovely soft padded coat hanger and that will be featuring a lot in my future videos so thank you and then as well as that they made me a bag and it's all lovely and lined inside so again I will find something to put in there for my sewing because that just I never I can never have too many bags and it's better than a carrier bag isn't it. So I've been purchasing a few little bits and one of them was because I was told that Becky's sewing studio were releasing their advent calendar for Christmas. I know it's July and I'm really sorry for mentioning that word, but I really felt like I missed out last year. I saw a few vlogs, I think, Bex from What Bex Sews and I think Ruan from the Yorkshire Sew Girl both had these um, advent calendars 
and I loved everything that they got inside them. I was hoping to visit Becky's studio stall um, when I went to the Stitch Festival but unfortunately when I reached out she wasn't actually coming to that one because it is a bit too far for her so I need to travel at some point to Birmingham and then I can actually go and see her stall in person. So anyway I thought right I'm going to purchase an advent calendar because I really would like to get that one leading up to Christmas and get some of her lovely uh, merchandise. So anyway, while I was looking at the advent calendar, I also found this cross stitch kit, so I couldn't resist it. And she's actually sent that one now. And it's this lovely little kit. And it says, let it sew on it. And I just thought that would be really lovely to do leading up to Christmas, because I can have that in my sewing room as one of my Christmas decorations. So I really enjoyed getting that. And then, what else did I get? Oh yes, I'm going to put a picture in here because I've got quite a few labels. I I saw Sam from So Let's Sparkle with Sam when she first introduced us to the Cozy Club handmade labels. And at the time I was trying to be good and I didn't get any. But every time I go to do a garment, I've only got one style of labels and I really wanted to get the other type that they do, which are the long rectangular ones. So I did the pick and mix option where you can actually select several different designs rather than just one. And they were here within three days, really efficient. And I'm looking forward to using them in my future garments because I do sometimes forget. Um, after that, when I went to Lincoln, you know what it's like when you talk to fellow sewists, you find out of different shops that you can go to and purchase things and I'd heard about a company called Boys and I thought they were all located quite far up north but the last time I went to the Scudden Social they actually told me that Lincoln had one which was like why have I not known this before so I messaged my brother on the Saturday I was going up and I said how far is it from where you live and he went it's five minutes so after a few detours, he seemed to think we were going to Home Bargains first and then I think it was Morrison's. We finally found it and I'm going to put in a little clip here so you can see what they had. It's not like a huge store and it isn't just haberdashery, but what they did have was quite a bit. So I'll show you that and then I'll show you what I bought. I bought these are all quite practical items and they're all notions I'm just saying no fabric is this elastic and it's actually called boxer short elastic so I bought three meters of this because I do have a really good pattern for some trunks for my husband so I thought that'd be good to get some of that so I'm ready to go and I also got some bias binding now I do find Find, I do find finding, that really makes sense, but you'll know what I mean, patterned bias binding. Um, I have just subscribed to the Specky Seamstress Bias Binding Club, but I also like to see it in person sometimes. So I got this lovely one with purple hearts on, and I got three metres of that. 
and I did have the fringe dress in mind that I've just made but because I managed with the hem I didn't need to use it but I got this one as well three meters and then I found some webbing which is another thing that I struggle to find online and I do like to see it in person so I got this beige stripe one I got three meters of everything just so I had enough and I got this blue version and then for my daughter she loves rainbows so I got her this webbing which is slightly thicker so that might be a bit fun um, sewing through but that's going to be for a sew over it tote pack because she liked the one I did and apparently she wants two now so yeah that's going to keep me busy um, I also treated myself to this little Trimmits cross stitch kit of this lovely giraffe because I do like giraffes and I did actually purchase something else similar but that is going in the mail as happy mail to somebody so you might see that in someone's future vlog and then I just bought some practical things because I struggled to find these on Amazon or anywhere like that they were 80p each, so I thought that was quite reasonable for these triangular rings. And the last thing I got <laughs> was because I thought they were so sweet and I just thought they would look cool on something. I just don't know what. It's one of those buys, but they're pencil sharpeners, buttons, and I'm hoping you can see it through there. If not, I will put a picture in when I'm editing if I can't see it myself. I did purchase some other things as well, which are again going to somebody else, so you might see them in future vlogs. Um, so that was boys, and I'm really looking forward to um, going back there again another time when I'm not with my brother. As much as I loved my brother coming with me, it's not the same as having a look on your own, because you feel like you shouldn't hang around too long. And um, because it was the first time I went in there, it was like going in a candy shop and I just looked at everything. It was like, what do I need? What do I need? And I couldn't remember. So I'm definitely going back there another time when I go to Scub and Social. So after that, um, I got a few purchases from uh, Penny, Fabrics by Penny. Um, it's a Facebook group that I'm part of and they have some bias binding, binding as well but this is jersey bias binding so i got this lovely navy one nice and stretchy and it feels really soft and a purple one no surprises it's purple and again that's really nice and soft so i got those and then i just bought some essential interfacing from there and excuse the rustling I also bought something else very sensible, which was some overlocker needles, because my confession today is, I've never replaced the needles in my overlocker, but it, it doesn't seem to need them, but I'm going to give it a nice little um, spring clean, I think. So as well as them, that's all the physical purchases, except for some patterns that I got printed off from Flamingo Prints. Now, I always use Flamingo prints. I know there's other companies out there, but um, I had purchased the Waratah wide leg pants from Ways and Wild, and I used my voucher that I won as part of So Blood Pressure. And so I got the instruction book as well. And then I also had the Friday Pattern Company Avenir jumpsuit when they had their sale. So I got that printed off. And I've mentioned this pattern before. I didn't get the instructions because there's not too many, but I got the Jolly Lab Rose jumpsuit. So I've got three patterns to cut out there that will keep me busy this week. So also, I'm forgetting one thing. Um, I don't know if you remember, I mentioned that I thought I was getting the Specky Seamstress subscriptions, but for some reason, Although I had it say I'd ordered it, I obviously didn't confirm the order at the end, but I reached out to Laura and she was so lovely and we've sorted it out now so that I will be getting them every month when everyone else does because I've actually done it right now. But I did get the bias binding from July, which says it doesn't have to be perfect with the picture of the seam ripper on it. And then the two labels, which you will know by now, so I'm not spoiling it for anybody. You've got these two labels. So you've got the matching label to go with the bias binding and then these daisies which are great 
So thank you so much, Laura. That was brilliant. I really appreciate your help on that one. So what are my plans? So I want to make another patina blouse, no surprise, but this time it is going to be another cotton version. But I have this lovely purple vintage cotton fabric that um, Josh from Legend Textiles gifted me in a box. And I've really wanted to wait until I get something that I love, a pattern I love to do it justice. So I am going to use the purple vintage cotton for that one. And that will be hopefully something I get made up during the next couple of weeks. And then of course, I've got my holiday planning to do. So I am going to be planning some shorts, which I purchased from Pattern Emporium because they've got some shorts at the moment called the Getaway Shorts and they're on offer for five pounds. So they're a really good deal because you get three different length versions. Um, I do prefer my shorts a bit longer than some of the patterns I've seen. Um, I've also got the Kira shorts from Sew Over It to use, so I'm going to try one of each just to see what I think. I've just got to look through my stash and see what I can actually make shorts with. Um, also, I'm hoping to finish my Sorrento jacket from Sew Over It. Um, like I said earlier, I'm on stage 96 of 101, which means I'm just finishing off the waistband, the cuffs, and then the buttonholes and the buttons. I'm looking forward to the buttons. That's the first time I've used jean buttons, so I'm hoping I don't bash them too hard and dent them, but I do have spares. Um, also, I'd like to do another tie dress, if I can, from Sewing Therapy, because I've been wearing that quite a lot in the heat. And obviously the t-shirts with the knit fabric that I adopted, and hopefully a swimsuit. But I haven't got that long, I've got about a month roughly before we go, so I've just got to make sure that I cut them all out and then just get on with them. So I'll show you how I'm getting on next time. So the last thing I just want to talk about is my number of subscribers. I've managed to get over 1,000 subscribers now and I just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody who has supported me from either day one or from recent because I really really appreciate everyone who has liked, commented and watched my videos and if you subscribe then it does help me get out a bit more in YouTube. I don't know why, it's just how it is but I really appreciate all the vloggers that have mentioned me and anybody that's watched. I really really am grateful. Thank you so much and what I wanted to do was say, because I've reached that number, I would like you to have some input on some of the content that I produce. So if you want to have a question and answers video, or if you want to see me do a sew along, or mainly anything sewing related, obviously, but I might not want to show you my fabric stash because that would take a very long time. But um, anything is appreciated, any feedback, I, you know, I will take on board. So that's it. So hopefully you will get a chance to do some sewing this week. And thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And I'd love you to comment so I can see what you're up to. Take care. Bye for now. Oh,